Let me welcome our next speaker to share some thoughts. You already heard a little bit from him this morning, Dennis Simmons, uh, Lungar Heritage Natural Resources Management. So ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome Dennis. What's really important to understand is cycles. Our people in cycles, right? The Western society puts our young people in the leadership role, 30s, and that's not really where they are. Well, they're a leadership role in your 30s, but you're a leadership role for the ones below you, not for the ones above you. So 10, your cycle of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. I'm five cycles in, I'm 50, but I still sit below Wairong, I sit below um, Uncle Farley and all of that, all of our elders, yeah? So my job is to support, you learn to support, and then when you become an elder, you know how to lead because you've learned how to support. You don't know how to support, how are you going to be able to lead? And I have a problem with that word lead. How are you going to be able to um, talk or support your community? So that's an important aspect that we have to bring back is those cycles, where people sit within that structure and who's at that elder's role, their turn to be elders, everyone gets a turn, and then we keep moving through that cycle. It's something that I'd like to bring back. Jay and, um, and Jay, I'll just get you to come up while we're just going through some of this. Because Wairong spoke a little bit about dances, but we don't do dances. Dances is what happens in nightclubs, right? <laughs> dances, and I did a few of those too. I just gave a couple of moves. I've got seven children to prove it. Um, <laughs> but, but we do ceremony. We do ceremony. And there's a big difference between ceremony and a dance. A ceremony requires preparation. It comes from a very deep and spiritual place because our country is kind of like an internet highway. It's the place where you can call back to your old people and they'll bring you knowledge. It's a place where you can call to the sacred places, to the spirits of our land. A very, very um, special and significant place. That's how land is for us and that's the importance of ceremony for us and our, and our young people. One of the issues for us is fire, you know? Fire is very important for men. Fire is the place where we will sit around at 8 o'clock at night and we'll talk crap at each other on the back and brag about our footy skills. <laughs> but around about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at night, we'll start talking about stuff that's really important to us. We'll go internal and we'll start talking about those deep issues, trauma, things that are important, things that we need to deal with. Without fire, and fire is the spirit itself, hard for us to do that. Fortunately for us here in WA, they have a big trauma around fire. One mention of the word fire, and why did they start running, screaming? It's a big panic thing. But we've always had it, and we always will have it, but it's an important aspect that we have to bring back. Now, so what I might get used to do is to come down here. I'll give you fellas to come down here, except for Uncle Fal, I never tell him what to do. See, we're not, this is not really a conference, right? This is a ceremony. This is a modern ceremony, a modern ceremony that you fellas call conference. And you're all sitting around, and we're sitting around, and everyone's talking. But you don't get a lot of opportunity to, um, to practice. Yep, cool. So what we're going to do, um, we're just going to do... Now, don't blame me for the way you, you fellas... You, you built your conference rooms here so they're not designed to do dance and ceremony, you know, so you need to talk about to the uni about that. But what we're going to do, we're going to take you through the wage, the wage ceremony. Now, the wage, what people call the wage dance or the emu, it's not a dance. It's a transformation ceremony where you will transform yourself from a pesty human that destroys everything to a very significant and important animal like the emu, which is my totem. And when I was a kid and I got the, the totem from Pop Manjin, Jetta Jackson or Ken Colburn, I was like, holy crap, why couldn't I be an eagle? <laughs> <laughs> Here I am, I'm the, I'm the emu. <laughs> so, so this is an important, an important ceremony. And this is something, you know, when we talk about land and the importance of how we do our thing, you have to have a feel of this. You have to understand what that means to get out of that superior model, thinking that we are better than the animals and the land. You've got to get out of that space. So just demonstrating, 
Heidi, do you want to do the Where's Heidi? Right next to you. Do you, you want to do the girls? Do you want to show the women how to do the So the women, women drag your hand underneath like this. And the men, Jay, just demonstrate the men. Hand behind your back, right? So this, so this becomes your car, right? This becomes your head. So what you want to do, and I used to do this with my boys, when you go into this, you need to make this become your wedge. This becomes your head. And then the way you move, like the wedge, And you can connect to that. Most people I get to do this, I run around and go, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the psychology around that. Everyone's looking at me, I'm really embarrassed. This hasn't happened since I was at school. But the spirituality of it, the deeper component of this, is that the breath, the change, what it's like to be wedge on the earth. How do you walk? How do you think about it? What's important to you? Try not to let, don't let your embarrassment take over what you're trying to do here. And just move easy. stuff with um, Nandin Deridakan or Ken Colwan, as you would know, and, um, and protecting a lot of the sacred sites out here in the northern suburbs and, and doing a lot of that work. And when I was a teenager, he used to take me out and do some stuff with me. And it was really, because he would take me out around a fire and he wouldn't talk. Oh. And I'd say something and he'd flip me with the Kylie. <laughs> and then I was like, well, this is weird. <laughs> you know, I'm out here and, I'm not, and he's not talking to me. What are we doing here? You know, so, that's the mind, see? The mind tries to make sense of stuff. And that will happen. The mind will do that. What am I looking at? What's happening? But he didn't respond to that. So I had to come out of the mind. Because then I started focusing on the fire, because that was really the only thing around me. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> so then you come back into that, into the word, into that spiritual place. And then you start to find those deeper things that we need to think about, that we need to have in a society. Stuff that we've forgotten, we used to have always as First Nation people, our people still carrying this, but we need to bring back. And it doesn't stop us from being the society that we have. It actually strengthens us. Because, have we, have we got a, a whiteboard marker of any kind here? Thank you. So if we think about, because you know, if you think about what, you know, what we're actually even trying to do here, like what is going on with this whole life thing, if we think about that, now, if that's 10,000, and if this is 70,000, then that means our society here in Australia is that much. <coughs> it's not really a long time, is it, when you look at all of that that we've had going on here before that. So here's the thing, here's the theory. What are the two most important things in our life, the two major peaks? What are our two major peaks that we have? Birth and death, Birth and death right? And death, can we buy our way out of that? No, that's like taxes, isn't it? It's coming. There's no way around that, right? So we are born and we die. That means we're on a journey, right? That's not forever. That is a short distance of time that we will walk 
this space and we will contribute or do the things that we have to do. Now, what are the things that are important to us? You know, we have houses, money, degrees. We buy all this stuff. We become successful billionaires. Let me ask you this question. What do billionaires think about when they're getting ready to pass away? Their accountants? Their money? Who do you think they want to talk to? Family. Well, that's weird, isn't it? You've done all of that, and at the end of it, it's your family you want to speak to. The fact that when we're ready to pass, we want to speak to our family and the people that we love, that shows us and guides us that we are on a spiritual journey. That's what it's about. How we conduct ourselves. How we work with each other. That's the importance of what we're here for. <coughs> now, we have consumers, we have all of this kind of stuff that we do, and that's all great. You know, I've got a pair of and Williams, fancy boots, we all have that. But at the end of it, it comes down to the more, to the family and the people that we love. We should always remember that. We should always remember that in terms of what we're trying to do here and what's important. The way we conduct ourselves, the way we go about our business. And spiritually, we're always being watched by our, by our older people. Pop Nunjan told me that when you pass, you go back to the Kali, to the fire where the old people sit in. Now, depending on how you conduct in yourself, you'll be invited back to the fire or you'll be sent away from the fire. Well, it's cold when you're not around the fire. So I want to make sure that I'm getting invited back to the fire, which is why we do all of this community and making sure that we're training and working with young people. Um, so that's, that's something that we need to bring back, that we have an understanding of now. Don't confuse spirituality with religion. It's not the same thing. I have nothing against religion, but religion, when I look at it, is something that people are led by. Spirituality is something where people can show you the path, but it's, it's your journey. You have to walk that yourself. You know, our, our leadership model, my leadership model with the young fellas is, Every time I start out in front, every time they take a step forward, I take a step back. So eventually they'll be running the show and I'm sitting around drinking coffee. It's really what I want to do. So, so there's a few ways, different ways of looking at things that we have that I'll say work for my people, but I know that they work for all people. You know, because I've been to London, I spent three months there. And they were saying to me, Oh, you're one of those Aboriginal people. You've got kangaroos that bounce out of Main Street and all that. <laughs> I was like, well, not really. But when I went across to London, I saw sacred sites there. Stonehenge and places like that. And when I looked around, I was like, holy crap. That's a sacred site. That's a place of energy. That's a place of ceremony. The White Cliffs of Dover. You know, that's like Wilkie. It's like an ochre. The colour of your skin is governed by where you stay. If you're in a cold climate, you're more likely to be fair. If you're in a hot climate, you're more likely to be dark. So that's superficial. Can't use that excuse anymore. At the end of the day, and this is my favourite saying, if aliens come down and decide to kill humans, who will run? Yeah, all of us, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so you should probably think about that too. Um, so that's a little bit about the deeper, the deeper stuff that I like to talk about. And before Pop Nungeon passed, he also talked to me a little bit about welcomes. I don't, welcomes is not really something I like to do unless I have to. But one of the important things he said about it was about, it's not given that you be welcomed on country. It's not given. There is an expectation that you will conduct yourself in a particular way. That's how you welcome people. If you conduct yourself this way, we welcome you. Because if you don't conduct yourself that way, then we can do something else with you. <laughs> now, that should surprise people, because that's how you invite people into your house, yeah? yeah? You don't say, come into my house, eat all my food, smash my table and do what you like. <laughs> it's like, you can come into my house, but we expect that when you conduct yourself in a particular way, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. 
So that's the same with welcomes. But our people did a lot of the welcomes in the start because we wanted people to understand how important and part, how important that is and part of our culture and the importance of that. All right, I'm sick of talking, you fellas now. I'm going to quickly show you this and I'm out. How long have we got what on? Five minutes over. <laughs> Am I? Okay. But that's so okay. I think that's okay because I think we're enjoying it, yes? Yes. 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 Alright, so what do I do with this thing? Oh, here we go. So this is our board for Mark Ridgell. Della Morrison, Dwayne Radcliffe, the first Aboriginal Vice Chair of the Evaluation Society, Kim Farmer, Nigel Andrews, a Kimberley man, Kroon Kalpa, who's a, an activist. He's not really there to do anything. He's there so I can look after him because he's like my little brother. And he does silly things. And so this is a bit about what we do, the mission statement, but this is more for funding people than it is for you fellas, right? This is how we get access to the funds, strategic goals. You know, we're playing the game. Holistic cultural approach, the working together on country, around the seasons. So what we have to do, we're gonna get young people back on country and they have to be there for a year. They have to see the way the land changes from one season to the end of the seasons, to the six seasons. Because if they don't learn that, if you don't know what your country changes or how it moves and you live here, that's pretty weird. It's like being in a house that you don't know where everything is. Oh, holy crap, I've been here for 10 years, I don't know where the toilet is. What's going on here? So that's an important part of what we want to do. And then we also want to work with language and those kind of things as well, because language is really important, yeah? And it's a... There's a particular rhythm in language that's important for people to hear and for people, when you say it, when you speak it, it does something to you spiritually as well. So for me, you know, I'm Kaiba Waraka Nyunga Mwanyada Man. That's Kaiba is my Nyunga name and um, that's my connection to, uh, to country. I shouldn't have had these photos. I want a cruiser to change them because it makes it look like we've got a camp. <laughs> and when people think of camps, they don't want to fund a camp because they think we're all sitting around roasting marshmallows and drinking beers. But this is, um, this is the gear that we have so that we can get people back out on country and start that process of healing, reconnecting people with land and connection. Till Wairong and that sort out the native title and um, we get land back so we can do this stuff. So we're out at the Yanship National Park doing that kind of stuff. And we're teaching the young men to do the um, the tourism talk about the stories and do all the cultural stuff, so that reconnects them to culture as well. Yep, winding up. Won't show you the funding, because Wairong won't show me his funding. <laughs> yeah, so this is um, photos of the young people. Where's Mika? Mika, look at that photo of you when you were a nitty girl. So, um, so that's what we've got to get back to for us as a people and, um, you know, don't come to me and ask me, can you do a camp, can you do camps and run people out on camps, because I don't want to do camps. It's time for us to start working with our people now, our young people. You know, we've done a lot of educational processes. We tr we've helped non-Aboriginal people a hell of a lot. It's time for you fellas to get involved with us now and help us to do what we need to do, because this will help you too. Thank you. Yeah.